And one of the big themes for this market is just how much cash companies are holding on their balance sheet and how that's a lot of firepower there. And of course, we're waiting for the Trump administration to roll out some kind of new law or new rule that would allow these companies to repatriate that cash without a huge tax burden. What can you tell us from what we find within the Bloomberg? Yeah, so what's really interesting is that looking at the most recent annual data for companies in the S&P, right, there's obviously, as you mentioned, a big talk about cash held overseas. And so when you look at uh, companies in the S&P, um, a lot of that cash, it's right around one trillion, a little bit less than one trillion for the S&P. And so what's interesting about that is when you think about how much of that cash will actually come back, right, if we have a tax holiday, so to speak, um, a lot of that cash actually won't, depending on what the foreign operations are, right? So you might actually hold assets. I'm actually looking at this right now in terms of the cash held overseas. This is an equity screening function that you brought to us. You can see Apple here, $216 billion, mm -hmm. Microsoft, $108 billion, you know, Google, 86 This is a lot of money over there. No, it's a lot of money, definitely. And you want to you be able to look at these companies from where they actually have exposure, right? So some of the reason why they hold this cash overseas is because they're funding operations over there. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're, they're investing in CapEx over there, so there's not as much incentive to bring all of that cash back so back over if we see a tax holiday. What happens when the money does come over here? Um, I think the final function we've got, because we always love to get heavy mm -hmm. on terminals when you're here, is looking at buybacks versus dividends versus CapEx. When that money does come across in the environment, do we expect them to put it to building new plants or do we expect for them to raise the dividend? Can it go any higher? Can we speculate on that? Do we know? Sure. So if you actually, yeah, the chart that you've pulled up here um, basically shows the S&Ps on the bottom there in blue. The top three lines essentially look at companies that focus on buybacks, uh, the dividend growers, you could say, and then capital expenditure. Dividend so buybacks in orange. white, you got dividend in orange, both beating not only the S&P, but also the companies that spend the most on CapEx. Right, exactly. And so over the last three years or so, too, that's kind of shifted towards more the dividend growers actually outperforming. But I think the big picture here is that when that cash does come back, you know, back over here, um, you want to see what historically a company has done, what some of the growth prospects are for these companies. If they don't have a lot, if it's not very capital intensive, some of it might more go more towards dividend growth, buybacks versus some of the more capital intensive industries. So definitely something you want to look at because all three of those uh, indices outperformed the S&P since, uh, since 2009.